She was either doing this to help with chronic pain or to make her skin softer, but I mean, she might have also just been drunk. <laughs> Welcome to Pretty Historic, the show where we go back in time to learn about some of the weirdest beauty trends in history, and then we try them for ourselves. I'm your host, Salorm, and this episode is a personal favorite of mine, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> Today, we're getting a little freaky and kind of sad, I guess. We're going back to the 1500s to take a bath with Mary, Queen of Scots. That's a sentence I never thought I'd say. Mary was born in good old 1542 to the King of Scotland, James V. Unfortunately, he passed away just six days later, forcing her to ascend to the throne when she was less than a week old. But obviously, a baby can't rule Scotland, and more importantly, the Scots were under attack by the English. So her mother sent her to France to be raised into a fine young lady. Though, to be honest, a baby queen would be kinda cool. I love a ruler who prioritizes naps as much as I do. I'd be down for that. Now, things get a little bit complicated here. Mary was also thought to be next in line for the throne of England. She had inherited Tudor blood through her grandmother, who was the sister of Henry VIII. So, when in 1558, her cousin Elizabeth Tudor ascended the English throne, Mary became next in line. But some felt that Elizabeth I was an illegitimate queen because they thought that Henry VIII's divorce from Catherine of Aragon and marriage to Anne Boleyn, Elizabeth's mother, was not legit, meaning Mary was the true queen. Safe to say, Elizabeth and Mary were not BFFs. So what's a maybe legit, maybe not legit queen to do? Well, try to get another throne, of course. She married King Henry II's son, Francis II, and when he became king, boy, was she thriving as a queen consort. But he sadly passed away only a year into his reign. Regardless, Mary went back to her Scottish throne, though the Scots at this time weren't really feeling her. She'd been Roman Catholic in France, but Protestantism was now the official religion of Scotland. Poor Mary was an outcast in her own home and single as fuck. She managed okay for a while, encouraging religious tolerance in Scotland and generally being pretty and tall. She had a shock of red hair and was five foot 11. Oof. Can I get a couple of those inches? It's hard out here for a short queen. But then she married for love, her cousin to be precise, Henry Stewart, the Earl of Darnley. It was normal back then, okay? Still gross, but come on. Darnley ended up being one massive red flag. He and his friends actually murdered Mary's closest confidant, David Rizzio, right in front of her. Red flag! <laughs> Long story short, this guy died too. Some say he was killed in a trap he set for Mary, but most theorize he was killed by another nobleman who just didn't like the guy, which I get. This is a weird pattern for Mary. I don't know if she's cursed or something, but this is weird. Now Mary made a terrible mistake next. She must have really had no support system because she decided to marry the chief suspect in Darnley's murder. Eventually, Scots grew so tired of her ineptitude that they forced her to abdicate the throne to her son. With nowhere to go, Mary turned to her cousin Elizabeth for safe refuge. And Elizabeth was clearly shady as heck because she held Mary in prison for the next 19 years! Then, in 1586, Elizabeth discovered a Roman Catholic scheme to murder her and crown Mary as the rightful heir to the English throne. In Elizabeth's eyes, Mary had to go. She was tried and executed in 1587 at 44 years old. Man, family did not mean much in the 16th century, I guess. Even though Mary's story is tragic, she's often described as a perfect picture of a Renaissance princess. But to our modern day standards, this was a very weird time for health and beauty. Some trends of the time included painting veins onto your body to highlight your paleness and plucking your hairline to create a prominent forehead. Okay, so some truly wild information coming up. Queen Elizabeth had a notorious sweet tooth, so as a result, she had terrible teeth. She was so influential that women began painting their teeth black to look like her. Weird flex, but okay. It wasn't common to bathe at this time, so instead people would wash their faces and their hands, and that was it. When people did bathe, they would share bath water because an amount that large took a long time to heat up. Men would usually bathe first, then the women, and lastly, the children. I'm gonna guess that by the end of that, the water was the same color as Queen Elizabeth's teeth. 
It's said that Mary's son James hated bathing and would only take one bath a year, fearing that the water was full of diseases. And honestly, depending on who James bathed after, he might have had a point. He also reportedly wore the same set of clothes for months. Is Mary not giving him clothes? What What's going on here? This makes it all the more interesting that Mary is alleged to have liked to bathe in not water, but white wine. Bougie. It's unclear why she may have done this, but it could have been for beauty or to help with the chronic pain in her side that worsened when Queen Elizabeth banned her from traveling. Not sure how these correlate, but I accept it. Okay, so we may not know exactly why she bathed in white wine, but we know that spa practices involving grapes and wine aren't that uncommon. Today, some spas offer vino therapy a treatment where whole grapes are massaged into the skin, and red wine is even said to contain an antioxidant called resveratrol that helps prevent signs of aging and can remove impurities. Not sure what any of that means, but if I can drink the wine, I'm open to it. All right, I'm not gonna lie, if I had a life half as hard as Mary's, I would bathe in wine every single day, but I'm only gonna do that today. I can't do that every day, because that's expensive. But first, I gotta buy a lot of wine. This video is sponsored by Bright Cellars. Bright Cellars is a monthly wine subscription box founded by two MIT grads who wanted to help people discover more wines that they love. All you have to do is take a 30 second quiz and Bright Cellars will match you with a wine that you are guaranteed to love. Bright Cellars also makes sure that you know exactly why you love the wine too. Each wine comes with an educational card that provides serving and pairing tips. For example, right here we have a color fast wine and it is a Riesling, so let me Pull out the box. Here is the Colorfast Riesling wine. This wine is balanced beautifully with bright acidity and ripe flavors of stone fruits like nectarine and white peach. This one goes well with peach cobbler and ice cream. Delicious. And as you can see here, my box has six completely different wines cater to my taste. No box is ever the same because Bright Cellars adjusts based off of my feedback. Plus, Bright Cellars customer service is top notch. You can always reach out to pause your subscription at any time or with any questions about your wines. Right now, Bright Cellars is giving Watcher fans 50% off their first six bottle box. That's six bottles of custom selected wines for just $55, including shipping. Just follow the link brightcellars.com slash watcher50 in the description below to take the quiz and get your wines today. Thank you again to Bright Cellars for supporting our show and giving our followers this limited time offer. And now, back to the show. Okay, so I'm here at the parking lot of the grocery store because as you know, I need to buy a lot of wine to make this happen. So I'm gonna go in, try to get as much box wine as I can. I don't know if there is a limit. I know it's box wine. I know it's not very classy. I know a queen would not bathe in box wine, but we're on a budget. Okay, so I'm gonna get as much as I can. If we gotta go to another store, we'll do it, because we need a lot. I gotta bathe in this. Let's go. Hey there. Got some wine. I bought like a lot of box wine and no one was worried about it. All white wine, all ready for me to bathe in it. We're off to a good start, I think. Wee! Okay, so we got a bunch of wine, as you can see but I feel like we need more, so I'm going to another store. I'm trying to fill up an inflatable pool, you guys, so I need as much wine as I can get. I'm back from the store, and we got some more wine. We got everything we need, I think. We got the Sauvignon Blancs. We've got a Chardonnay. -Nay. We've got a Pinot Grigio. We've got all the fancy white wines. Not the same brand that, you know, our Queen of Scots would have had, but it's modern. We'll still do the job. Can't wait to bathe in this and drink it because I'll be doing that. We've got our wine, we've got our tub, and we have a guest, Jen Che. She's an amazing beauty and lifestyle YouTuber, and I'm really excited to have you here today. I am so excited. Smell it? I can already smell yeah. the wine behind us. <laughs> so what did you think about the Mary Queen of Scots story? I mean, honestly, what a what a tragic 
story, also like lots of family backstabbing. Oh yeah. I thought it was so interesting how they had these weird beauty rituals that we would definitely never, ever, ever do now. Like yeah. the veins on the face. Literally making your teeth black. Yeah. But maybe she had really good skin. So it's said to like remove impurities and be an anti-aging kind of thing. Do you think you can get drunk from just sitting in wine? Maybe we should try. I've never personally taken a wine bath before. I, I feel like that would probably um, be a little, a little pricey. Yeah. Um, but I've definitely tried a few skincare products that had some like grapey wine elements Ooh. in it. The good grapey goodness. The good grapey goodness <laughs> in your skin. And you were right. Yeah, this is a very expensive hobby. We bought a lot of wine. Okay. <laughs> we are trying to be some young, beautiful, fresh-faced queens here. Uh. <laughs> All right, Jen, are you ready for this wine bath? Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. Ooh, that sounds good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, still a little chilly. Chilled wine. <laughs> Should we kneel? I'm just kneeling. That That's how I get into water. <laughs> okay, so I know we're really chilly right now, <laughs> but you know what's gonna warm us up? Maybe some wine. Yeah. <laughs> Drink some, pour some in. Right? <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Did it. Tell me when. I think that's good. You sure? Yeah. You sure? I'm good, I'm okay. good. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. And a glass for the tub, of course. I mean, technically this is also for us. This is super convenient, you know? If we don't like the wine, if we feel like we can't finish it, we can just pour it in the tub. We're just adding to the ambiance. Exactly. <laughs> Cheers. Treatments. Does it feel different sitting in this compared to water? Yeah, so I'm kind of surprised. It actually feels just like water. Like it doesn't feel yeah. thicker. Mm -hmm. Like when you swirl this, there's definitely more Viscosity. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> but in, in the actual pool, it feels like very much like water. Mm -hmm. yeah. Could definitely relax out here, cool down on a hot day. <laughs> the wind blew and I could smell the wine. <laughs> oh, you can smell yeah. it? <laughs> we got the aromatics. <laughs> no need for perfume today. We've got our wine. <laughs> what you wearing? <laughs> Chardonnay. Chardonnay. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe our skin will be very exfoliated because, you know, wine is kind of acidic. Yeah, I'm yeah. wondering if like the, the gross dead skin cells will just get acided away. That's a word. <laughs> <laughs> she was either doing this to help with chronic pain or to make her skin softer, but I mean, she might have also just been drunk. It helps the pain. And that might have also helped the pain. <laughs> or the illusion of softer skin. Like exactly. It's so you're soft. like drunk and you're like, my skin is so soft. It's so soft. <laughs> um, Jen, do you know what time it is? Uh, I do not know what time it is. Oh, well, it's time, time for trivia. Trivia. <laughs> I hope you studied, girl. I studied exactly wine percent, which is <laughs> none. Okay, first question. <laughs> Mary's first husband, Lord Darnley, was murdered. How was his body found? A, drowned to death in a shallow pond. B, strangled in the garden. C, stabbed to death and hidden in a bush. As much as I would want to say, like, drowned in a shallow pond, I feel like that would be difficult. Yeah, that's very specific. I think maybe the stabbing seems the most murdery. Okay, well, the answer is B. <laughs> Strangled in the garden. I mean, of course it was in the garden. Why not? Why not? You like the wine puns! I love it! Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> One winter night, Mary left Darnley at home to attend a wedding. At about 2 a.m., the house he'd been staying in exploded. But the explosion did not kill him. He was instead found strangled outside the town walls. Dun, dun, dun. That's weird, yeah. It's like the house exploded, but he was strangled. The first round of explosions didn't do it. But we didn't like Lord Darnley, so that's okay. Anyways. <laughs> If you could bathe in anything in the world, what would it be? Do you actually have to get clean? No. I actually feel like it would be really fun to just like be in this little tub with like a bunch of puppies. Oh my God. Wouldn't that be great? Like, I don't need to be clean. I just want to be like loved on by puppies. Okay, I love that. I, I think great. that's good for your skin. I hope the puppies would be okay with, to get to so you. Cute. <laughs> 
Okay, if I could be in a tub of anything, I would be in a tub of Ferrero Rocher's. Those are my favorite candies. And like they're wrapped, so oh, I can yeah. eat them. So it's safe. Mm -hmm. The puppies can come too. They just can't eat the chocolate. Don't eat the chocolate. That, that's not good. <laughs> Don't eat the chocolates, puppies. They you will can. be two separate beds. Trivia question number two. In 1567, after failing to maintain a stable monarchy, Mary was imprisoned in Loch Levin Castle and forced to give up the throne to her one-year-old son. What did Mary do after she was imprisoned? This is an open-ended oh, question. sorry, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just sitting there, the wine is getting to me, y'all. My bad, anyways, moving on. A, she spent months making a series of elaborate tapestries. B, she wrote an epic manifesto. Or C, she escaped and raised an army. I don't think it's right, but I'm just gonna say manifesto. Okay, you chose B, she wrote an epic manifesto. Mm -hmm. The answer is C, <laughs> she escaped and raised an army. Army. Of course she did. So Mary. She, gosh darn it, Mary. You and your armies. <laughs> Can you not? <laughs> so she escaped the castle with the help of its owner and raised an army to fight against the Earl of Moray. Unfortunately, she lost and fled to England where she was imprisoned again. And she wonders why they didn't like her. So she went from <laughs> one prison to another prison and then died. She's a very dramatic girl, Mary. Where was the reality TV at this time? Oh my goodness. All the wine, all the wars. Because I'm telling you, she wasn't making elaborate tapestries her No, whole life. she I was not that. living her tapestry life. <laughs> Getting none of them right. <laughs> Just blame it on the wine. But overall, I feel like this is really fun. Um, next time, I feel like I would boil the wine. <laughs> Maybe have a wine jacuzzi. That would be really cool. Ah, some bubbles, some heat. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I feel like this experience has given me a greater appreciation for Mary Queen of Scots. I'm not gonna lie. It's no surprise to me that she needed a wine bath like this to relax, to spoil herself when you go through that much. You should spoil yourself. She needs to live her best life, yes. take all the wine baths she wants, because you do not know the next time your cousin's gonna lock you in a dungeon and then murder you. Exactly. You know? You life just is too short. Know. If this wine bath was something that set her at ease, go ahead, girl. Bathe in some wine. Be bougie. So, Jen, do you think this trend should stay in the past or come on down to the future? I feel like it could definitely exist in some way today. Like this was this was nice and relaxing, yeah. but I don't know if like the open air wine bath experience is necessarily going to be the most cost efficient way. Maybe maybe it's some sort of like spray on the skin while you're getting massage. Mm, a massage. Definitely, yeah. I would definitely do that. Oh yeah. No, I agree. I think that like there's a lot of elements of this that I really like. You know, I like drinking wine while I'm in a bath. <laughs> And I like the smell of wine too. I can't really differentiate this between a regular bath and a wine bath. All I want is for the wine to be a little hotter, I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I feel like this is something that we could bring to the future. I'm into it. Yeah. You did well, Mary. You did well. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for your contributions. <laughs>